Okay, the last section in this chapter is where do these magnetic fields come from? What makes a magnetic field? And so that's what we're going to, what we're going to try and, and, and get a handle on. And I'm going to start off with a magnetic field produced by a long straight wire. The calculations of these magnetic fields are a, a just a tad beyond the scope of, um, of the, the, the class. So we're just going to give you some of the formulas and get you an idea, get you a, hopefully get you some intuition on where these magnetic fields come from. Well, uh, state the magnitude of the magnetic field produced by a long straight wire. So by long, what do we mean? We mean infinitely long. Okay, that's what we mean in physics. So think of a wire that goes to infinity vertically up that way and infinity down vertically that, uh, down toward uh, the center of the Earth and you got yourself a long straight wire. And you say, well, huh, that doesn't exist in nature. And I say, you're right. But uh, anytime you're close to a, if you have a wire th that's, that's this long, a foot long or so, and you're close to that wire, effectively, it looks like, from your perspective being, you know, two millimeters away from the wire, looks like the wire is infinite. And the results that we'll get here are extremely accurate in that limit. As long as the distance you are away from a wire is small compared with the length of the wire, then it, it's the, what we'll introduce is an excellent approximation. All right, so here's my long wire. It has a current I in it. What are the magnetic fields produced by it? Well, so it turns out they're in circles <laughs> around the wire. With, with electric charges, if we have an electric, a positive charge, what do the electric fields look like? They come out, straight out from the positive charge in all directions. So they're radial, they're like the spokes on a tire. Here we're not in Kansas anymore. Magnetic fields have weird directions, and this is one manifestation of it. These, the current in this wire produces magnetic fields that are in circles around the wire. And um, the magnitude of the magnetic field in this wire is given by mu naught i over 2 pi r. Let's talk about the things that we're already familiar with. r, we understand. It's just a radius. Nothing more or less than that. It's a distance from the wire. No big deal. And you might expect, as you get further and further from the wire, so as I get further and further away from this uh, wire, as R gets bigger and bigger, you might expect the magnetic field to get smaller and smaller. And you would be right. These magnetic field lines get spaced out further and further apart, which indicates that the magnetic field will be weaker and sure enough, if R increases, um, then the magnetic field will decrease because they're in an inverse proportionality. That all makes sense. So that's a good, easy way to remember that the R has to be in the denominator because as you get further from the wire, you would hope or expect the magnetic field to get weaker. 2 pi, uh, that's just 2 pi, Nothing, no big deal there. I is the current. Uh, measured in, in amps. It's the current in the wire. What's this mu naught? It's called the permeability of free space. It reminds you, perhaps, of the epsilon naught, the permittivity of free space. It's associated with the electric force. Epsilon naught is 1 over 4 pi k, if you might remember. There's a 4 pi here, and this is exactly equal to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. And its units are tesla meters per amp. This is a fundamental concept, uh, constant of nature. And the reason it has an exact value is that the teslas is partially defined um, in order to make this come out to be a, an exact number. It's a fundamental constant of nature. It represents how well magnetic fields will permeate free space. 
And um, so it's uh, mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meters per amp. And this gives the magnetic field a distance r away from a long straight wire. All right, let's um, talk about the direction of the magnetic field. We know it goes in circles around the wire. Um, but what are the direction of the circles? And to do that, we need to introduce what's known as right-hand rule number two, RHR number two. And the way that you do it is you stick your thumb in the direction of the current in the wire. And then you spin your hand around, pretending your thumb is an axis of rotation, and the direction your fingers are curling in give the direction of the magnetic field. So if the current's up, then the magnetic field lines are going to be around like that. So shown on this diagram, put my thumb in the direction of the current, the magnetic field lines come out, across, into the bore, into the screen, and then back around, etc. So curl the fingers of the right hand in the sh into the shape of a half circle, point the thumb in the direction of the conventional current, I, and then the tips of the curled fingers will point in the direction of the magnetic field, the circles that go around the wire. Let me dem demonstrate this for you. This is a demonstration of the magnetic field produced by a current carrying wire. I have a, a power supply here which will supply a current in this direction in the, in the red wire. Then there's a, a wire that you may be able to dimly see that passes under the plastic here, up here, over here. And then the, the segment of wire that I'm, I'm going to be um, focusing on is this little maybe two inch segment of wire that starts here and goes vertically down. The current in that wire will be down and according to uh, the right hand rule, if we put our thumb in the direction of the current, then our fingers will, will curl in the direction of the magnetic field that that wire will produce. We have three uh, little magnets, compass needles, they're actually interacting a little bit with each other right now, as well as interacting with the Earth's magnetic field. They're all pointing roughly in the direction of north in this particular room. But when I introduce uh, a voltage into uh, and a current in this wire, the current uh, down will cause those magnetic field uh, magnetic fields to fluctuate and cause a, a circular magnetic field here. And the compass needles should reflect those changes. So this needle has responded admirably and is pointed in the direction of the local magnetic field. This needle is also doing pretty well. This needle is still thinking about the direction of um, the Earth's magnetic field. But basically we see here that we've got uh, a movement in the direction. We have competition between the Earth's magnetic field and the circular magnetic field. But we've got a movement in the direction of a, a magnetic field produced by this current carrying wire. So I just turned the power off and the magnets are again pointing in the direction of, of the Earth's magnetic field. This is uh, this magnetic field that's produced by a single wire. If you have a, a bunch of wires together, for example, in the third grade when you wound a wire around a nail, attach the two ends of the wire to a battery, then you could magnetize the nail. What happens there is much more powerful here because you have several wires very close together producing magnetic fields in the same direction and the combined effect is a much stronger magnetic field. The, in contrast, the, the magnetic field produced by just a single wire is relatively weak. Okay, an example. Long straight wire carries a current of three amps. Particle has a charge of uh, the charge given there and is moving parallel to the wire at a distance of 0.05 meters. The speed of the particle is 280 meters per second. Determine the magnitude and direction of the magnetic force on the particle. So this is a combination of two different concepts. The magnetic field 
Well, the force on that wire is going to be QVB sine theta, but the magnetic field, B, that's experienced by that particle is given by the concept that we just did. Mu naught I over 2 pi times R. And so you can now just plug in all the numbers. Um, I'm, I'm not going to actually plug them in, it looks like. But the charge you have, uh, let's see, a particle, yeah. Charge is right here. The speed is right here. Mu naught, 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. Uh, the current is right here. Uh, the radius, the distance, is 0.05 meters. That's that guy right here. And the angle, what's the angle? That's the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. What is that in this case? The velocity is up parallel to the wire. The magnetic field is circular. It's going around like this. So this red circle shows a magnetic field line going around the wire. Where that circle passes the particle, the direction the circle is moving gives the direction of the magnetic field, B here. And how is that direction related to the velocity? You say, well, magnetic field is horizontal, the velocity is vertical, and they're the angle is 90 degrees. So this angle here will be 90 degrees. And then the direction of the magnetic force on the particle. Let's do that too. To find the direction, we're going to put our thumb in the direction. As you can see right here, the thumb in the direction of the velocity, fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, and then the force comes out of the palm and that'll be toward the center, toward the wire. The particle will be attracted to the wire. Uh, two long straight wires. I'm going to skip that. Well, no, I won't. I'm going to do this example. Uh, the magnitude of the total magnetic field at the origin of the XY coordinate system. So we're interested in the total magnetic field right there. And both of the wires, so this is a cross-sectional, uh, this is a, it's a long straight wire, and it carries a current of magnitude I toward you. So you have to think about this being a long straight wire coming out like that. And, and it's coming out, the current is out of the screen. Both of them have the currents coming out of the screen. And we want to know what the direction, what, what the actual uh, magnitude of the total magnetic field at the origin of the XY coordinate system would be. Well, let's first figure out the directions because that will give us some hints here. The current is out. And if we use right-hand rule number two, with my thumb in the direction of the current, my fingers are going to curl in the direction of the magnetic field around this wire. So the magnetic field lines are going to come in circles like this. And we're particularly interested in the magnetic field circle that passes through this point. So let's draw it. Okay, magnetic field is going in this direction. Where that circle intersects the point of interest, what is the direction of motion of, or the direction of the magnetic field? And you say, well, it's coming in like that, it intersects that point, it's pointing down. And you'd be right. So the magnetic field produced by the wire on the right at this point is down. Well, let's look at the other wire. This one's also out. So I'm going to put my thumb in the direction of the current, curl my fingers in the direction uh, of the magnetic field, which will look like that. And then consider, again, the 
the magnetic field line, this should be a circle centered on this point, but I think you get the idea, uh, is going to be coming up at this point. So where that magnetic field line intersects the point of interest, the magnetic field in this is in this case pointing up. So you got the right wire producing a magnetic field that's down, and the left wire producing a magnetic field that's up. They're both wires are the same distance from the center spot. Two fields cancel, and you get a complete uh, cancellation. So you don't even have to apply the, um, the concept with the, the mu naught and all that. The current carrying wires can actually exert forces on each other. Um, if you look at wire one with a current coming out of the board, it produces a magnetic field in this direction. I2 um, is pointing, so if they're in opposite directions, so I1 is, is, is this way, I2 is that way, then I2 cross B gives a force that's repulsive. So this, this is uh, a variation, well it's opposite the usual idea that unlike charges attract, in this case unlike currents, meaning currents in the opposite directions will repel each other and like cur currents will, will actually attract. So if you have two two wires that are parallel to each other. This is similar to the example that we did before with the two, um, with the wire and the charge that was moving in the direction of the current on the wire. And, and these guys attract each other. So two parallel wires have currents that are in the same direction but differing magnitude. The current in one wire is I, the current in the second wire is 2I. Which one of the following statements concerning the situation is true? Um, so they definitely attract each other. Um, I don't know if I want to really get into that one too deeply. We're not going to do too complicated of problems like, like that. The net force um, that a current carrying wire exerts on a current carrying coil is the coil attracted to or repelled by the wire. Um, so you've got to determine whether or not the, these guys are attracting or repelling, you just need to look at the, at the interactions between this current and this current, and then consider this current and that current. So let's first look at these two. So these are two currents in the same direction, so they are like currents. And do they attract or repel? They actually attract. So this one's going to be attracted by, by this wire. What about this one and this one? Well, these are unlike currents, currents in the opposite directions. And they're going to repel. This current will repel that one. But which one is? which one of these two forces is going to win? Which one's the stronger of the two? So this is the attractive force, and this is a repulsive force. Which one's going to be stronger? Well, you say, well, the, uh, this one should be stronger because they're closer, and you'd be absolutely right. So this one wins, and the net effect is that you get an attractive force. 